You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 23rd, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are 100% steam-powered, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi there, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We hope you had a good meal yesterday and lots to be grateful for. And... uh safe weekend you know lots of traveling lots of bustling about and uh stay safe everybody yes we are recording this on friday just so you know so that we're not this is not a a best of show although i like to think of every show blue gal is a best of show (laughs) (laughs) this is we're doing this live we are actually recording on friday the day after thanksgiving i i do not go to the mall or to the shopping centers uh today so and I know that uh, we know that many of your favorite other podcasts are taking the week off or two weeks off or just putting their feet up and you know doing we're whatever. We're too OCD for that. Yeah, we just do this because <laughs> we do this every yeah, week. It, you know, sorry. here's the terrible secret: we'd be doing this anyway without the microphones, so right. I might as well put a microphone in front of us and record it and call it a podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do we have a new sponsor this week? We do. We have a brand new sponsor. It's a presenting sponsor. I don't know what that means, but I hear it on all the better podcasts, so this is what we're going to call it. It's a uh, 10-part Netflix limited science fiction series called CSI Don't Care. CSI Don't Care 2022, because we decided to put a little bit in the future, a little bit further in the future. See, in the future, white grievance cases caused by AJ MAGA types are all pre-cold cased by the police because honestly, nobody fucking cares anymore. Oh yeah. My white grievance. I got to talk about my white grievance. CSI don't care is put right on the job for those. And <laughs> so. My daughter won't come to my house anymore. Cause I have uh, Fox news on all the time and I call her a traitor. And then I call the police and they say, CSI, ma'am, we have a special unit just for you. And they have a <laughs> special redheaded policeman who whip their glasses off and look you straight in the eye and say, we don't fucking care. You we know, don't care, lady. Don't care anymore. <laughs> don't care. Nobody cares. You know the whole thing about nobody caring about your poor, shrinking, weird, bigoted demographic? We do care that you have health care. We do care that you have clean water. But your concerns, your paranoid fantasies, nobody cares about them anymore. Your head's full of bullshit. You need to change the channel. You need to shut up, sit down, and let the grown-ups clean up your mess again. But nobody cares. So, Again, brought to you by 10-part Netflix limited science fiction series, CSI Don't Care 2022. (laughs) And now we have a bunch of kind of weird media things. This is a week when media is let off the chain, it appears to me. Yeah, or something. and Or something. And there's a lot of stupid stuff going on out there. Mm -hmm. Jeff Greenfield saying things about Ben Sassy that... Regardless of how you feel about his politics, how he stays sane in this environment, I just don't understand how he does it all. Uh, Allow me a direct quote since I commented on this, and thus far I have (laughs) 295 likes on my – because it was (laughs) – it was. see, this this is what makes it so perfect. It was uh, Jeff Greenfield as filtered through Michael Gerson. (laughs) So, you know, it's like that – that's I don't mean to just burst out laughing at something, but that is just comedy yeah, writing. Itself. It is. And, and, <laughs> and you have to understand this is, this is a, a, by the way, the informal working title of this podcast is the third tribe. And by the third tribe, we mean the most insidious tribe of all. And that's the centrists, the moderate <laughs> centrists, the problem solver caucuses, the no labels fucks who never die. They never go away. It doesn't matter how fucking nuts Trump is. These guys can't exist without being the midpoint between two things. So, and I think it's important to clarify mm-hmm. this just a little bit because sure. I personally do like to get along with people and find common ground where you can work on something. Love to. Even even with Republicans. Sure. So, if fixing the sidewalks is a goal and yeah. the Republicans on my street agree with me, that the reality of the sidewalks existing and needing repair, 
uh, are both true in the world. Mm -hmm. And then we and then we move on to how we fix that problem and we wind up fixing that problem. Fantastic. That's mm -hmm. great. But if you're talking about a group of politicians who do nothing to investigate or provide oversight to the Trump White House, and then you're going to be a problem solver with them about things, and, and it's not really clear what you're talking about, and you're not working on climate change because their party denies climate change, right. and their funders are they are paid by their donors to deny climate They're change. They're chopping the uh, the the uh, EPA to bits and feeding it right. to the dog. Right, and, and saying nothing. Of, and your job as a congressman is to provide oversight and to the corruption that's going on at the EPA, to selling off state, uh, excuse me, uh, federal Land. lands yeah. to developers and drillers and so forth. You cannot be a problem solver with someone who does not share fundamental reality with you. No. And that's the problem. And so that's the problem. I'm not, I, I you, you uh, bring a lot of vitriol to this podcast, Drift. I said, everyone loves you for it. I do. <laughs> and I, I agree with it. I don't agree with just vitriol for the sake of vitriol. No. I really don't. No. I want to, I want to solve problems as much as anybody else. Sure. But the problem solver, and the, it's exactly the same thing as the no labels thing. It's, Let's just make pancakes and pretend that one side isn't crazy. If we just and it, give enough yeah. away, if we just if the left, it's always the left, it's always mm -hmm. the left. If the left would just always. compromise more, if they would just give up more, if they if their tone were just a little nicer, if they just yep. hug it out, man, eventually the right might stop trying to kill everybody. And and the right's like, this is great. You mean I can kick you in the balls all day long and and the wise men in the middle are gonna advise you to just smile and take it because eventually I'll get tired of kicking you in the balls. That's your advice. That's, that's brilliant. And the thing is people like Jeff Greenfield and, and uh, Michael Gerson pay no price for doing this because yeah. they're, they're, they're universe. Jeff, Jeff Greenfield doesn't give a shit about me. He doesn't give a shit about the rest of this country. His, his world is a world of, it's of Kabuki theater. It's a, a form and ritual. And as long as you properly say the right words in the right order, as far as he's concerned, you're, you've done your job. It doesn't matter that nothing happens, that nothing changes, that people's actual lives are, are rendered uh, impoverished and ruined, that people actually die behind Republican policies. Jeff doesn't care about any of that. He cares that you stood in the right light and said it in the right way and had a little swell in your throat. A little tear in your eye when you talked about how how mean our politics are, and that's where this quote just jumped out at a lot of people, not just me. But I, I just want to add that Jeff Greenfield's income depends upon Republicans returning his phone. Calls. Yes, and and be, so that's and that's the point. And, and yeah. willing to go to a stage so where he can hand them a microphone at the hand, at the ninety second Street Y, right. and he can hand and have pre selected questions and then, that and then will hand the microphone no to some yeah. some conservative centrist and pretend to have a debate. And right. they like they have this little kabuki theater, and nothing ever comes of it because no one's ever really debating anything because nothing ever gets resolved. But the actual quote from him is, "Mind you, he's talking about Ben Sass, who's a sitting U.S. senator. Right. Never mind his politics or his voting record. Just read this interview. Can't think of any senator, but perhaps Pat Moynihan, who would have thoughts, who would have thoughts like this. How he keeps his sanity." While dwelling in the political world is a mystery to me. <laughs> wow. Again, Jeff Greenfield doesn't live on my planet. He lives where he right. doesn't live adjacent to my planet. He lives in a completely different media universe where nothing happens to him, where there are no consequences to any of this action. And he can just glide on through, giving the microphone to whoever he wishes and, and having hopeful thoughts. And my response was this. Never mind his politics or voting record. In reference to a sitting U.S. senator, famous for big talk and zero action, sums up the impotence and decrepitude of the political punditocracy better than almost any other sentence I could yep. imagine. Yep. It literally doesn't matter to him how he votes. <laughs> a sitting, He's a senator. A He's senator. one of 100 people running this entire country. If only he yes. had some sort of power or platform, what which he could exercise <laughs> to control the lunatic who runs his party. But it's it's we witness that as normal, sane human beings and go, hey, Ben Sass, how about you vote against this motherfucker 
and take some power away from him. And Jeff Greenfield yeah. looks at at just his words, his empty, empty rhetoric, his book, where he wishes everyone could just live in the state with him and, and fight over streetlights. You know, I once saw a streetlight and I had a great a revelation and it turns off and it turns on and the traffic goes and it comes. And Why can't we all be like that? And to, to mm. Jeff Greenfield, that's action. That's political activity. Meanwhile, let's switch gears to uh, Paul Krugman. Yeah, let's do that. That's that's and Digby, by the way, bless, right. the blessed Digby had the same observation. Uh, I'm just going to read very quickly from her column, which is very, very similar to uh, Paul Krugman's, uh, which is observing that the uh, problem solver caucus is going to be a problem. It's the problem solver caucus is the same tiny group of blue dog Democrats who think giving their lunch money to Republicans in exchange for not getting punched in the face will solve all their problems. And if only the extremes on both sides would put down the firepower, we could all just get along. They're the ones who get us into this situation all the time. And she observes the right flank of the Democratic Party has always been complicit in enabling Republicans who take them for exactly the suckers that they are. Mm -hmm. Because they want so badly to get the approval of Jeff Greenfield and Michael Gerson and David Brooks and and Joe Scarborough. And that approval only comes from saying the magic words, which is both sides do it. Both sides are blamed. Both sides are the problem. Do you have Dr. Krugman's? Uh, I do. I you... have his tweet up. And he uh, is also talking about the problem. Sol- this exact same thing. Yeah. Problem solvers caucus. As I've said, Paul Krugman uh-huh. says, on a number of occasions, and he has. Crazy, radical centrists who refuse to acknowledge reality are among the most dangerous extremists Mm -hmm. in American politics. That's absolutely true. He is not being tongue-in-cheek here. No. No. (laughs) Uh, The reality of climate change, the reality of Republicans looking the other way while Trump, not, it's not just norms. He is destroying democracy. He is destroying the American populace's trust in institutions, in truth, in what's in front of their own eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who say, well, yeah, but, you know, both sides are equally bad are the most dangerous people. You've been saying that for 14 years. Decades, For, 14 years. In print, 14 years, and in private, I don't know, 30 years plus that. Yeah. 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 Going back yeah. to the Gingrich yeah. and uh, and uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh days, the early days of those yep. two. Um, and, yeah. it's, and so, at again, as I said before on this podcast, at some point, and that point was exceeded by me a long time ago, you stop asking the question, how can this person be so naive? How can every single one of these people be this naive in exactly the same way over such a huge stretch of time and stop asking that and start asking the question. Obviously they're not naive. Obviously they're lying for a reason. They're lying to serve some machinery that is giving them power. Who is the person who's running that machine? What are the interests of the person running that machine? That person clearly doesn't care about me because if they did, that machine would be pointed at the Republican party and not at liberals. Who keep... Except drift glass mm-hmm. that there are some people who would like to go back to a simpler time. Yes, when when Republicans were honest and decent, and let's go back to the previous Republican administration that did more things right yes. and was more reasonable about things, and go back to that brand of Republicanism. Sure. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> that never happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that brings us to uh, Mr. Ben Shapiro, who uh, is not very bright. No, we're sorry. No, he's just not. He thought it would be a great idea to go back and think about what Republicanism was like before Trump. I have to respectfully correct you, Blue Gal. OK, tell me more uh, about Ben Shapiro. He's he's not. <laughs> ben Shapiro's not very bright. Well, yeah, he's um, not. It's sad. Uh, he talks very fast. He he uh, he aggressively uh, lies about things. And he is the number one uh, up and coming young public intellectual for the conservative movement, um, which tells you everything about the conservative movement you really need to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is no one on the right who thinks about anything anymore. Um, no, his his argument uh, t- that I wrote about was not that uh, Trump is bad and Bush was good. Uh, he thinks Trump's doing fine. Uh, he's he's a, he calls himself a sometimes Trumper. 
Ah. His point was his point was no matter what Republicans do, no matter what Republicans do, liberals hate them. They mm-hmm. hated Bush too. You forget how much they hated George Bush. It was and, the, and there was no argument about the efficacy of the Bush presidency. In his mind, George Bush was just a great president. That's so obvious. Everyone can know that. Everyone can see. There's not even not even any point discussing that. It's that liberals, no matter what you do, will hate you just for being a conservative, just for loving America, blue gal. Mm -hmm. So all this Trump hatred, well, you forget, they hated Bush too. Oh, my God. And I just want to say, I'd be happy to have this argument with you, Ben. Uh, Not a debate with you because I don't debate, you know, rat fucking assholes like you because there's no debate involved. At no point during the discussion does anyone win. People pay money at Politicon to see red ants and black ants fight but that's just theater that's entertainment it doesn't really go anywhere but i'd be happy to i would be delighted if the republican party took ben shapiro's advice as they are drowning in a blue wave with a (laughs) boat anchor named donald trump tied around their neck Uh they decided you know be great you know we should really do now we should relitigate the bush administration (laughs) that's a good idea Let's do that. That'll distract people from how shitty Trump is. Let's talk about George Bush for a while. And Ben, I would love to have that conversation with you. I would sincerely love to sit down and hear all your stupid little rat head thoughts about how awesome Bush was. Because I got receipts, motherfucker. I was writing about the Bush administration. I don't know what you were doing. I think you were probably learning to shave on a regular basis during the Bush administration. You were some freshly hatched from some Koch brothers crash where they grow creatures like you <laughs> but the rest of us were grown up adults and we watched your party nearly destroy this country in eight short years we watched you destroy the economy we watched you lie us into a war that that you knew was a lie and then fuck that war up we watched you take a surplus and turn it into a deficit we watched you s- sleep with the switch while we were attacked by terrorists we watched you torture people we watched you bug people and we watched you lie about it every step of the way and we watched you sleep through the a hurricane that wiped out new orleans and that's just the highlight reel ben Yeah, There's a whole bunch of other shit that went on between those things, under those things. The Iraq war is not one horrible thing. The Iraq war is a thousand horrible things, all of which I'd be happy to talk to you about. But the reason that liberals like me were indignant and highly critical of the Bush administration is because your Bush administration was an atrocity. And we thought that was the worst you could do. Yep, But we were wrong. We were wrong. There is no bottom to the conservative movement. Until conservatism itself is disassembled and buried with a lead shield over it under 100 feet of concrete, we're going to continue to have this problem because creeps like you will ooze back into the public discourse and be welcomed onto the public platform, you know, the marketplace of ideas, by people like Jeff Greenfield, Mm -hmm. who really think that both sides of this discussion should be had. And what – anyway – no, you're right. I'll stop it right there. That's exactly I, I it. Just, That's exactly I it. I just want to – there are ideas, and they're almost all conservative, that don't – that are not debatable anymore. No. That don't deserve a place at the public table. And by giving them a place there, you give them a mistaken impression that they're debatable. And, and I want to mistake- take this personally for a moment. Just take this down to the personal level because I wrote a post today at Crooks and Liars about a number of people – Uh, on Twitter this week, who noticed that their MAGA family has toned it way down. Some of them said they voted blue in the midterm election because they've just had it with Trump. Uh, Uh Usually it's the mother that's done that. (laughs) Uh Uh, A lot of people uh, found that their MAGA family didn't want to brag and, and strut about politics all of a sudden. Oh, really? And uh, a couple of them said that uh, it was the Khashoggi murder that uh, uh, was the you know straw that broke the camel's back for them, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I pointed out uh, that you know Russians, if you're if you're if Russia was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back, you have to remember that as we've said in earlier podcast, uh, MAGA types consider Russians to be white, so right. white supremacy. Putin wants white supremacy and, you know, the, the whole uh, Brexit thing is about white supremacy in large part. And uh, turning Europe upside down over immigration is white supremacy. So uh, 
that was not going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Babies in cages. Well, lock them up is for brown people and women. So and liberal right. women, right? So right. we're we're fine with that. Uh, and now we have this Khashoggi uh, excuse making for the Saudi royal family uh, and and the Saudi leader in particular, uh, who Ten Grain calls Crown Prince Bonesaw. That is a situation where you are siding with Arabs. Right. You know, so there is a very subtle, uh, not too subtle, racism going on with, mm -hmm. you know, why are you siding with brown people? Uh, and I th I really think that's what it is. I think that's what why this is sort of the straw that broke the camel's back for some people is it's not just that you're totally uh, going against journalism. You're going against someone who is in this country as an American resident whose children are American citizens, who was murdered in an embassy uh, in Turkey, uh, brutally murdered. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're you're siding with money and your family's financial interests over justice. Uh, yeah. It really has a lot to do with race. That, but that camel's back never stays broken. No, no, it never does. Um, the big mistake that I think Ben Shapiro is making mm -hmm. is that the people who pay his salary mm -hmm. spent a lot of time and a lot of money making sure Bush never showed up in the history books. Right. Right. Uh, making the whole Bush administration disappear. But see, that's why I think Michelle Obama hugs Bush a lot. I, I really do. I just think she wants it. everyone to remember, look at this guy. This is the guy we replaced. Remember? I don't want to accuse her of being as nasty as I am. But, you know, no. that she does remind everybody, look who's here. Uh, but I wanted to get back to this personal thing of yeah. noticing your family or dealing with your family and noticing that perhaps they are starting to step away from uh, MAGA centrism. Uh, and you know, it is only psychopaths who really don't care what their family thinks. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you, ha you do care what your family thinks. You do care what your personal tribe thinks. That's ingrained in your, your social makeup, but you, ha you do have control, conscious control over how you react to your crazy family. And you right. have to limit exposure to them uh, if they're crazy. Uh, you and I are blessed with a family that's pretty sane overall. And well, weird. <laughs> and they're weird. Very weird. Weird, but, but not politically. Wonder uh, wonderfully right weird. Right? They're not right, right. when you're politically no. crazy. No. Um, those people that have that in their family, uh, you know, have to have to manage exposure to that. And, and I totally understand, you know, not being there at Thanksgiving. There were... <laughs> We and I were laughing last night at some tweets from some, uh, it wasn't just MAGA, it was what, uh, 4chan and, not 4chan, what is it? Oh, Q, QAnon. QAnon, yeah. that's it. All the, it's the same group it's of people. It's the same, it, and it, it is it's just one people. conspiracy after another, and how uh, I'm eating alone this Thanksgiving because my, th my uh, family has no tolerance for truth. Right. <laughs> And it's, I thought you liberals were tolerant. No, we're not. Dining alone on the holidays to to own the libs. Yeah, <laughs> so. you got us. You got us. Wow, my liberal tears are. I can barely see my monitor through my liberal tears. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I I I feel for people who have that in their family, and uh, I'm thinking about you this week. So yeah, but it's it's on the same par. I'm back a, a long time ago. I used to help run. Uh, the academic computing department at an mm -hmm. art school in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and every now and then a student would come in. I, I was in charge of the open labs and classrooms and curriculum and a whole bunch of stuff. And every now and then a student would show up to one of my labs who hadn't bathed in like two weeks <laughs> and just stank. I mean, there was really no subtlety about it. And, and the students who worked for me would come running up and say, you got to do something, man. Cause he, he, he reeks and he won't leave. And I'd go down there and put a can of Lysol next to him and say, either you go in the, the broom closet and spray yourself down with this or you go the hell home and, and wash. But, you know, if you have made yourself unfit to be around, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't be surprised when people don't want to be around you. Right, right. You know, the, if you are a conservative, you have spent a considerable amount of your adult life making yourself an asshole, making yourself a preening, indignant, 
ignorant, racist asshole. And you're proud of it. You like you like strutting around, showing people your big conservative dick, and 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 complaining about and just uh, the conservatives I know. I I never do this in public. I never launch into a political conversation no. the minute I see someone. Right. No, I you disagree don't. with. I just you really never don't. do that. No, I really don't. don't. I, it's it's a it's I'm very Midwest polite. You yeah. know when, when I'm not doing podcasts, but I know people who just walk right up and start a conversation mid sentence about it about Hillary Clinton or whatever it is, because they've spent their life making themselves into that person. Right, right. They like being an asshole. They like being dicks. But that's and, why I think we need to have uh, a set of conditions by which you will be welcomed back into right. polite society, uh, including not starting your conversations that way. And furthermore, there there does need to be some atonement. And and that yes. means uh, yeah. it's not just enough to say I'm an independent or no. I'm coffee filter party now or I'm yes. I'm never I don't know who Donald Trump is or he was mm-hmm. just a coffee boy or yeah. you know we're yeah. gonna have that we are gonna have people who want to try that and good on well. you for trying but it's we cannot let it work again because we'll be back to you can see the progression of how much worse Trump is than Bush. I believe that out there, there is a president worse than Trump waiting in the wings. Yes. I, I, and, and we you know will who is get going that to... president if we let the Republican Party survive this presidency. And you know who is responsible for making sure the Republican Party, like like a, a tiny flower after a, after a conflagration, yeah. they make sure that it's repotted carefully and grown it's up centrist. to be even more it's virulent. It's both sides It's the fucking centrist. Yeah. It's the fucking centrist. It's it's the no labels asshole. It's Jeff Greenfield. It's David Brooks. And and here's the thing: those people, Jeff Greenfield doesn't own NPR. David Brooks doesn't own the New York Times. Uh, 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 Chuck Todd doesn't own NBC. These are corporate decisions made by large companies who deliberately, who deliberately say, "No, we can't let liberals have their way. We just can't have that." We cannot have liberals coming in here and telling us that we're going to have a, a minimum a minimum wage for everybody. We're not going to have – we can't have universal health care. We can't have college pay. We cannot do those things. We need – even though the pillars, even though the centrism that they, that they stand by depends entirely on both sides being equally wrong, which Donald Trump has proved manifestly to be untrue, they will not acknowledge it until they are beaten into doing so. They can't, they won't do it, and and I this is the thing that maddens me is you can see it coming. Uh, we saw it coming at the end of the Bush administration, and and Barack Obama, bless his heart, um, played a huge and horrible role in enabling it because he so wanted to be the purple president, he so wanted to be the, the guy to unite the country, and Mitch McConnell just licked his chops and said, "Oh, we got him, we got him." We can do anything we want to this guy, and he'll let us do it in the name of bipartisanship. And he'll never raise his voice, and he'll never get mad, and we can just take his fucking lunch money. And 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 we were in the middle of two wars and a great recession, and everything was burning, and he had to put the fire out, and I give him all of that. But we can't let it happen again. Can't let it there happen cannot again. be another nope. day. And and but we know who does it. We know who drives the getaway yes, we car do. now. We know who they are. We know what their game is. We know what their shtick is. We know what their 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 line of bullshit is. We know what their faces look like. We know what channels they're on, and we can watch them doing it in real time. And now the trick is finding the place to put the crowbar to break right. the machine, make the machine stop doing this. Because unless <laughs> Chuck Todd goes home crying every day because the liberals are so goddamn mean to him. This is mm-hmm. going to happen again. Mm-hmm. And, and so watch uh, and, for and the lifeboats. And as you see lifeboats popping up in media, set fire to them on social media. That is something that all of us yeah. can do. Everybody has right. a piece of this. Right. Everyone right. has a piece of this. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about a quick news roundup. And then we have some letters to read. Uh, yes. The time for honoring yourself will soon be at an end. Uh, your your fake highness, highness. Donald Trump. Uh, highness. Yeah, that's from Gladiator, by the way. His the whole Thanksgiving yeah. thing was a joke. Just everything, the steam stuff, the thanking myself for myself. Uh, 
giving thanks. I give thanks that I exist and save this country from the horrible Kenyan who fucked it all up. That was Donald Trump's out loud Thanksgiving eating, prayer. Eating Pretty Thanksgiving much dinner at his own hotel and uh, charging everybody yeah. to be there. Uh, yeah. So it, the whole thing was just a uh, uh, unmitigated Trumpian event. Um, mm -hmm. More news roundup. Crossing the Rubicon, literally the White House authorized U.S. military troops deployed at the Mexican border to use lethal force and conduct law enforcement operations, which is against the law. Uh, well, I mean that, uh, you know, the origin of the term crossing the Rubicon. Yeah, it's the river. It's the river that Caesar mm -hmm. crossed to go take his army right. into Rome. Donald Trump has authorized the U.S. military to use lethal force on U.S. soil. Right. That's crossing a mm -hmm. line. That mm -hmm. is crossing a big ass. That means you can, that means Donald Trump can deploy lethal, he can deploy regular U.S. military force inside to the United people. States at his discretion to do, yep. to kill people. That's what it means. And unless he's stopped from doing that, he's, he literally crossed the Rubicon and we have to push him back across it. Uh, the White House attacked activist judges for temporarily blocking President Stupid's attempt to refuse asylum to migrants who cross the border illegally. Uh, this is not going to stop. Right. This is this and this his fucking wall hating immigrants. Uh, that's all he's got. Yep. That's all the Republican Party has. And they are they're going to keep doubling down and doubling down and doubling down until they get the war they want or until they are driven from power for a generation. But there's no middle ground anymore. There's no place in the center for people who think that maybe if we just give them the EPA and the Department of Education, they'll love us. Let's hug it out, bro. No, there's no more of that. that those days are over. The bipartisan leaders of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee demanded that Trump say whether Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. So that's the grown-ups. That's the grown-ups over at the Senate demanding to know. Meanwhile, Donald Trump blamed the world. You know, what? we just blame the world. Blame <laughs> everyone. Everyone's responding. And literally, he said, yeah. it's a big world. Everyone's to blame. And no, you're to blame. You're to blame. No, you. And you want you. you're cashing checks from this guy and he's bailing out your son-in-law. And yeah. and uh, that that's it's all about this is one moment this week when Joe Scarborough was just dead on right with no error yeah. at all. When he said this is all about money Donald Trump can make when he leaves office. Yeah. Uh, a federal judge blocked a Mississippi state law that banned most abortions after 15 weeks, ruling that it was unequivocally violative of women's constitutional rights. Uh, the judge, his name is Carlton Reeves, wrote that. The fact that men, myself included, are determining how women may choose to manage their reproductive health is a sad irony not lost on this court. Standing ovation for that judge. Right. And they now they're going to have to do the same thing about Ohio because the heavily gerrymandered Ohio uh, House of Representatives is passing one insane law after another about abortion. And it's yes. got to stop. Mm hmm. Uh, Trump is once again threatening to shut down the government. Mexicans won't give him $5 million. Oh, wait, Democrats won't give him Democrats, $5 million yeah. to pay for his stupid yeah. wall. No, Mexico's going to pay for it, Mr. President. Yeah. So-called no, president. And no one ever said that. Mexico's going to pay for it. Yep. No, no. Fake news. <laughs> U.S. farmers, many of whom remain rock-solid Trump supporters, are finding it very nearly impossible to sell the huge stores of grain that they would have sold the Chinese buyers. You know, why don't you just eat it? Why don't you just serve it to your kids morning, noon, and night? That that would do it. Everyone in your family if you're just still a Trump supporter after he ruined the economy of your farm. Yeah, and, for no and, fucking and reason. I, no, no, there reason. is a reason, which is I don't want to admit I was conned. That's the reason. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Ivanka Trump repeatedly used a private email account to conduct government business in 2017. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, doesn't think that that's it. the number of P of magas on Twitter saying who cares? Yeah, you know we all care because you're a yeah, that's, hypocrite. Yeah, that's the kind of thing where you just want to slap them individually, mm -hmm. just line them all up and say, <laughs> okay, everyone, show of hands, everyone who thought who said Hillary Clinton locker up emails, uh, WikiLeaks, we love WikiLeaks, line up, you all get one open face slap from every motherfucker who had to listen to you for the last year screaming about that anybody who chanted lock her up needs to be ashamed of themselves and they aren't they well they don't have the the machinery the shame gene yes. so you have to you have to bring blush to their face with slapping i'm afraid <laughs> it's the only way 
to I draw. Think, I think drift it, class is in a mood, don't you? <laughs> I, well, I, I, you know, this is this is this is Harlan Ellison's proposal once upon yeah. a time that everyone who voted for uh, Richard Nixon should be chained in the public square. Uh-huh. I don't I don't know if I like that America, <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> I do. Trump wanted to order the Justice Department to prosecute Hillary Clinton and James Comey. And that's just because he was watching Fox. I swear. He watched Fox and he said, hey, you know, they're talking about we should prosecute Hillary Clinton. All these commentators talk about prosecuting Hillary Clinton. I think we should just do it. Don't you? As if to prove my point, <laughs> Donald Trump, after lecturing America on the importance of decorum and the press, com- uh, the press corps on decorum, uh, called the incoming House Intelligence Committee chairman Little Adam Shit. Yes, he did. Doesn't doesn't understand human intercourse, doesn't understand shame or logic. Donald Trump only understands being put in his place. Trump criticized the retired Navy SEAL who led the raid on Osama bin Laden. Yeah. 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 Now now think now think about this. This is not science this is not science fiction no, university. And this I'm, is not I'm asking all of you to cast your mind back six years <laughs> and imagine your favorite podcast, The Professional Left, which at the time was one of the only liberal podcasts in America, reading this list to you mm-hmm. and saying, no, no, seriously, seriously, the next president of the United States uh, going to not be only upset thinks... that they didn't catch bin Laden sooner and he's going to right. blame Navy SEALs for it. The ones who read the, lay, the raid. He's going to blame them. He's going to call the incoming House Intelligence Committee chairman a shit. On Twitter. He's going to call yeah. African countries shithole countries. And he's going to uh, claim that we can we can get rid of forest fires by raking because <laughs> the president of Finland told him that. And those are going to be only the remarks in like a 36 hour period. Yeah, that's that's in years. one week. <laughs> and and that uh, and 40 percent of this country is going to nod right along and jerk off like monkeys and go, that's my boy. I love this son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. What do you how, how do you feel about living in that country? And. Everyone we would have said that to would have said, you're crazy. That can't possibly be America. That can't possibly be true. And we would have told you uh, six years ago exactly what Paul Krugman said today, which is, no, no, no. The centrists, yep. the centrists, the third tribe is going to let this happen. They're so desperate not to call Republicans crazy and to blame liberals and to cripple everyone on the left uh, to bring them down to the Republicans level, to create straw men so they can get angry about uh, that they're going to let this happen. And this is going to be the president of the United States, thanks to assholes in the middle who can't bear the thought of liberals winning and governing as liberals. All right. We're going to spend 10 minutes reading uh, a couple letters uh, from yes. uh, our listeners and uh, fans. And we appreciate you writing it. You can write us anytime at proleftpodcast at gmail.com. That's our email address. Uh-huh. Uh my first letter is from our friend Dogface Terman, who helped us so much in Science oh. Fiction University. And he has a, sh- a farm with uh, sheep. And he always sends me pictures of his sheep because he knows I love sheep. Uh, and he said that number one on my list of things I'm grateful for are my little white walkers. <laughs> he calls them <laughs> <laughs> his white walkers. You know why he calls them white walkers? Because winter is coming and they are ready for it. He's ready. also mm-hmm. grateful for music. He found a fantastic uh, Jane, Jane Mansfield, 45, Jane oh, Mansfield oh and Jimi Hendrix. Oh, you're kidding me. Together playing Suey, S-U-E-Y. Yeah. And he found that in a record store. Uh, and then he also bought, wanted you to know, Drift Glass, he bought a new copy of Bowie's Lodger to be, replace his beat up old oh, yeah. copy. And so Good he choice, mounted man. the old jacket on his wall, and it looks really cool there. Uh, and he is wearing, in this picture with his sheep, uh, his Treason 45 shirt. <laughs> and he said, you know, I like it when people give me a thumbs up for my shirt, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a bigger kick out of all the dirty looks I get. <laughs> so thank you for everything, Dogface Terman. Do you have a letter to read, Drift Glass? I do. And this is from Eric, who who wants to tell us that he has been ragging on about the perfidies, great word, of the orange Mussolini for too long. I've never really allowed for the tremendous pressure of the job this man has been <laughs> called to undertake. Pressures under which any ordinary mortal would easily be crushed. 
Just a glance at the presidential schedule for the next few days bears witness to the almost Herculean efforts required by that office. This is the entirety of the White House published agenda for Trump Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Tuesday, accept the White House Christmas tree. Wednesday, lunch with Pence, pardon the White House turkey. That's it. I couldn't do it, and I'm certain Batman couldn't do it either. (laughs) Lunch yeah. with Pence, though, that takes a lot out of yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I remember Barack Obama put his feet up on the uh, on the uh, desk once, and they called mm-hmm. him lazy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Because, you know, he put his feet up that yeah. one time. Yeah. And he's black, so obviously he's lazy. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. I just wanted to do a shout-out to Peggy. I, I do believe we read her letter back in the summertime. Uh, she's the lady who wrote to us about getting a letter from her son, that was from their congressman. And she thought it was a campaign Mm. mailer, but she opened it and it thanked her son for his call about separating immigrant families. She said, I was shocked. I thought my son was entirely apolitical. I have had to nag him to vote in the past, but I remembered that he works in a restaurant with many immigrants and this is probably personal Uh. for him. My daughter Uh lives in Boston, but she still has a Kansas area code, so she still calls our Kansas representatives, including that idiot Kevin Yoder, who is proud to have gotten the Right to Life endorsement. He had seven challengers in the Democratic primary vying to unseat him. It's usually a struggle to get one, and I am proud of my kids. I want to do a shout-out to her because Kevin Yoder lost in November— to Sharice Davids by nine points. And so I wanted to revisit that letter and uh, congratulate Uh Peggy and her children for getting that job done and all the other voters and uh, activists in Kansas who made that happen. I have a letter here from Ryan. And Ryan would like to say, you guys are exactly what the left needs. Hell yeah, Ryan. (laughs) You're Rush Limbaugh without the lies. It wouldn't go that far. We need to be aggressive in in our messaging. Now that I've finally gotten out of the yoke of student loans and have been able to buy myself a place, I've been able to support more liberal media. I pay, not donate, to you guys and Wonket because I come to your sites every single day. I don't believe in using a service I don't pay for. The one thing I want for my money is that it goes to you. You have a family, and that takes money. You've lost your Amazon money, so use my money for you. Thanks for all you do. You're great writers, and in a just world, you'd be on all the Talking Heads programs killing the both sides lie. Well, thank you, thank very you so much, much Ryan. Uh, and I'll, I'll pass along your good your good intentions and good words and your support to uh, several prominent progressive podcasts <laughs> uh, who this week have come to regret their let's just hug it out, bro, approach to their dear Never Trump friends and who are regretting the fact, ruining the day, ruining the fact that there are so few a liberal podcast that, out there. That they was a bit any. much. I have to, you know, and and uh, I feel for anyone who trusts somebody and it winds up that it's not worth it. We we have, uh, that's happened to me and it's not fun. Yeah. Uh, but mm-hmm. to tweet that uh, it's sad that there aren't more liberal podcasts out there when you're aware of it's three sad. of them and there are so many yeah. that really yeah. deserve in Unite have always done this and crooks and liars has always done this which is to uh throw a ladder down to smaller blogs and podcasts and say hey you know if you have a podcast or if you're starting a podcast you can email me i'll give you free advice which is exactly (laughs) you you pay for it what it's worth but you know i'll and after you've done a few shows i'll be happy to listen to you i like to give new podcast time to settle in. I don't want to listen to your first show and give you judgment because you will change everything in the first 10 weeks. And uh, I want to give you a chance to figure out really what you want to sound like before I pop in and give you my advice about it. Uh, But I'm willing to do that for free to any podcaster that is progressive and wants help. I'm more than willing to mention your show on on our show. Uh, Anything that I can do to help, I'm glad to help. So when Someone who has uh, a much larger audience than me and a much uh, broader microphone than I have and has an HBO show says, well, why aren't there any more liberal podcasts than just these 
three. These three celebrity ones who are all my friends. Celebrity ones, exactly. You know, who've been on television. It's like uh <laughs> Google is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh it it really is time to throw a ladder down. And that's my advice. I'm not punching up. No. I'm just shouting up and saying, please throw a ladder down to the rest of us. Well, and, 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 and here's the point. If if you actually believe what you say, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm willing to believe that you believe what you say. That yeah, absolutely. The, the problem is Fox News, there's not a, a liberal media infrastructure out there. And why aren't there, you know, a hundred people doing the whole liberal progressive podcast? Man, we've been doing it for nine years. Right. You've been writing for I've been writing for going on 14. You've been you've been writing for 14 years, honey. Right. Longer than that. Right. We've been doing yep. it for a really long time. We've been doing it right where it needs to be done, right in the middle of middle America. And we're proud mm-hmm. that we do it. And we're not going to stop. And it doesn't really matter what what other people think or don't think of us, whether they know we're here or not. Mm-hmm. That isn't the right. point. The point is, if you actually believe what you are saying, that you need a a network, an archipelago, if you will, of liberal progressive voices in places where you don't normally hear liberal progressive voices, we're already here. We already built the place. We're already up mm-hmm. and running. You don't need mm-hmm. to do a right. damn thing. Right. And, and, and this- I do believe they're sincere. And I think that they are uh, at that big podcast um, performing a really important service. Yeah. I think they are teaching uh, young progressives how to network and h- how to do the boots on the ground work and and inspiring them to do it, yes, giving indeed. them enthusiastic mm-hmm. uh, kick in the pants to do it and that it's cool to do it. And that all of that is great. Uh, I wish you had Googled to find other progressive podcasts before you type that and i wish i wish you wouldn't say it so often because yeah. it gives me the impression that it doesn't really matter how many flares we shoot up you're not listening um yeah and i wonder if it if it isn't that they want people of their generation and younger to be their satellites yeah, rather maybe. than ex- pre-existing satellites aren't that interesting yeah because we're starting a movement of in independent podcasters out there yeah. who will follow us. Well, guy, like you said, we're here. Uh, we're not invisible. And, and I don't, I mean, I shrug, I shrug about that because yeah. I don't think um, I'm sure that whatever uh, those folks do in their careers is going to be fantastic and will make a difference. Uh, but I don't think they'll be podcasting forever. <laughs> Well, and we are stubborn enough that we're probably going to continue to do this for a good long time. And, so. and you make a good point that, you know, we're we're sort of the the, the Telstar satellite. We've been up since the 50s, uh, in the <laughs> yeah. 60s, you know, broad, pretty regular stuff. And, mm-hmm. and and they're interested in the Elon Musk SpaceX satellites, you know. Yeah, they're right, cool right, right. and they're small and they're – that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, but it's also got their stickers all over right. the satellite, right. you know, and that's – and, that's okay. And, and going okay. back to to what you what you were responding to at the very beginning of of my little editorial aside, that I feel sorry when people get betrayed by people who, um, yeah, yeah, you know, that's happened to me. I, it's happened to you me know. too. But here's the thing: if you if you're over the age of twenty six, and you're <laughs> and you've never heard the expression, but I can change him. I know <laughs> I can from a friend. Who you know goddamn well is never who's dated the same lunatics like six times in a row has never mm-hmm. changed one of them has never ever succeeded has, and you have no idea where this delusion that this time they're serious this time they won't fuck me over steal my credit card destroy my credit rating and take my car this one I can trust he's out of jail he's looking for love and no <laughs> no you can't you cannot oh please there's so many nice liberals out there why are you why is it always we're hugging up to the people who who were knifing us in the back two years ago and who clearly just want to use your couch to crash on and then are just going to dump you the minute the the winds shift and trump is gone what Mm -hmm. what is wrong with you that you need to do that over and over again so i i do feel sorry for them i really do i feel bad that you put your trust in a republican and they fucked you over Maybe you just need to be twice as old as you are now to have that happen to you three or four times. Mm-hmm. And then you realize, mm-hmm. oh, this is who they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're, if they if they find a gig that is going to stab a progressive in the back and that's the job, they'll take, they'll it. take it. Yes. And, and then right. afterwards. And it's going to be embarrassing to you when you find that out. Right. And right. What they really want to do at the end of the day is be Jeff Greenfield. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
can't we all just agree that we're going to pretend to fight with big old foam rubber boxing gloves for the for a, for money? And then afterwards, we're all going to go to the same bar and laugh about it. That's that's politics, really. That's that's how politics works, right? Right. Um, right. Anyway, you have another letter. Well, we we know that an awful lot of our listeners listen to lots of podcasts, yeah. and we're glad you do. And if you know of one that's struggling, or if you know of somebody that uh, might need more experienced help, I mean that sincerely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad to help. But remember, we sincerely. we we do have guidelines, which are the same with pod, uh, same with blogging. You know, you got to be you got to blog for three months. Yeah, you got it. You got it every day. Politics. If you're going to whatever you're going to podcast right. about, if you're going to podcast about craft beer, if you're going to podcast about knitting, if you're going to whatever you're going to podcast about, it has to be an obsessive interest mm-hmm. that you have researched and networked and worked on mm-hmm. for a long time, yeah. for a really long time. Yeah, that's got to it's got to be your life already before you put a microphone in front of it. Really, uh, that's that is good advice, no matter what you're podcasting about. Mm-hmm. All right, I have a letter from uh, Brad in Dallas. And Brad says, uh, am I the only listener who hears the gourmet coffee guideline (laughs) and thinks about the lines from the movie Postcards from the Edge? Yes. It's a a comedy (laughs) rule. Inflections go up at the end of the line. That's a comedy rule? (laughs) Her inflection going up. Yeah. Well, it's more of a guideline. (laughs) I think it should be a gourmet coffee rule. And uh, his point is that if it's a gourmet coffee rule, people will obey it. (laughs) Okay. I'll think about that. Also, can we hear a little bit about your theme song, Let's Think About Living? I think it's just too perfect to have not been written specifically for you two. Wow. Many happy retweets, Brad and Dallas. Well, uh, Let's Think About Living is uh, by one hit wonder, Bob Lumen. Uh, it hit number seven in the Billboard charts in 1960. Uh, Bob Lumen was a friend of the Everly Brothers, and uh, he had a band, and that band uh, left him <laughs> to go and play with the Everly Brothers. And uh, he was uh, in the army, uh, and and on would get leave on weekends and go to the studio in Tennessee and record. And so he was sort of half in the music business and half out. But he did have this hit called Let's Think About Living, which is at the end of our show. Bob Lumen, L-U-M-A-N. You can find it on YouTube. And uh, it was a, sort of a tongue-in-cheek, funny way of talking about the fact that there are so many sad songs on the radio in 1960, uh, particularly in country and hillbilly rock of My Baby Left Me or I'm Crying Because you know, I, somebody died or I'm wearing black or I'm this or that. And, and his uh, song was about, can we please stop this and sing something happy? So uh, yeah, we love that song and we have made it our own, (laughs) Uh, but that's, that's the story behind let's think about living. And we, and you can find it on YouTube, uh, Bob Lumen. And and we did go back and forth for a long time about stuff, about sound effects, Mm -hmm. Um, the the old uh, 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 network news and local news sounds from the seventies. Yeah, we thought that'd be kind of cool BBC stuff. So we we did sample an awful lot of sound files, and I believe and we were looking for. So I believe you found this absolutely perfect piece of music. Yeah, um, and yep. and that was that became our our end ending number. Yeah, it's fifty less than fifteen seconds of it, so we're fair use uh-huh. and. Uh, we just put a little clip at the end, and it does seem to work. All right. Do you have any other letters? I have one more it? letter from Ian. Oh, okay. It, Ian uh, uh, is writing to us from the from Canada, from our neighbors to the north. Oh, uh, yeah. Although I'm sure the next episode will be mostly about the election, I just thought you might want to mention that the CUPW, Canadian Union of Postal Workers, is engaged in a rolling strike right now to try to get the federal government back to the negotiating table. I'm trying to not let the Canadian accent into my voice. I'm failing miserably. I'm sorry, Ian. You're failing. <laughs> I was at the post office this morning checking with the postal clerk, of course, that I wasn't crossing the picket line and made sure that I voiced my support of the union loudly enough that I'm sure other employees and anyone else at uh, at their heard. She was quite thankful for my support, even when I was picking up mail that was delayed. And as I was leaving, again, voiced my support for the union as I walked past the queue. Go postal unions in every country. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't and agree. And that more. strike is still going yeah. on. There, there's 
weekend, the Senate is meeting in Canada this weekend to try to force them back to work. And uh, we're just, they're in our thoughts. Go postal yeah. unions. We're thinking about you. We, we really All do. Right. I mean, I got friends at the post office who I'm on a hand. I, I go in there to check, even if there's a line, uh, the guy will lean over and shake my hand and say hello. And I just, I find it incredibly valuable. What they do is civilization. Mm-hmm. Post, post right. The post office, the U.S. post office is civilization. That and libraries make the yep, country right. a, a, a nation, make us a people. And it's, I can't express enough. And it, it also has to do with the fact that my ex-father-in-law was a postmaster. And so there's a little postal, you know, my dad worked at the post office. Um, it's, it's just a thing that one of the, one of the great um, sort of unheralded American things is mm-hmm. the, is the U.S. Post Office and the unions yeah. that make sure those people have a good middle class life. Absolutely. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitties are Jake and Jill. You used to have a cat named Jake. I did. I, I love I love old Jake. Jake and Jill are Himalayans, and they're just beautiful, beautiful cats. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline or rule. (laughs) If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, Buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal address, Patreon, and GoFundMe information is all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are thankful for whipped cream, leftover ham, and having the whole family home safe and under one roof. And they wish all of our listeners a safe and happy holiday weekend. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.